Win big with new DRF All Access Pass Performances. With one best in class product, you now get all three pass performance formats. Go to drf.com and use coupon code one free PP for a free single card today. Dan Ullman, Ashley Mayu, taking a look at race number eight at Santa Anita on Saturday. It's the rescheduled grade three San Marcos. We're going a mile and a quarter on the turf. And let's take a look at this field. We have had a ton of rain in Southern California the last week or so. This turf, of course, could be a little bit less than firm. And maybe it'll affect some of these horses, Ashley. I'm not sure it will affect Balladeer, though, because we know this horse just likes to go right to the front. And maybe actually a soft turf course will help him a bit. Hey, it might help him and it might hinder a couple others in here. I think the big thing with this race that at least when I handicapped it is rem remembering it's at a mile and a quarter. There's so many horses in here coming out of a mile and an ace, so they're stretching out and others are coming out of mile and a half events. And I think a uh, mile and a quarter works for most of them in the field, but I think we may see just a little bit of a shift in tactics from some of these horses. And um, there are some big names still in this field. Let's throw up the time form U.S. pace projector for this race. Surprised to see Irish Profit up front. I just think that Balladeer, if he wants to go, can go to make the lead. I think he's a need the lead type. If he doesn't make the lead, he'll fight you. Yeah, I'm a little shocked about Irish Profit as well. Just knowing the race is where he's been forward, the fractions haven't been the flashiest. So uh, I would shuffle that around as well. I do think Easter Ocean, though, should be quite forward. Uh, I don't. I don't think this one, though. Again, another one I don't see being in front of Balladeer early on. Now, you mentioned horses stretching back out to a mile and a quarter, and one of them is Miss the Cut, who returned to turf with a good effort in the grade two San Gabriel going nine furlongs. I thought Irad Ortiz gave this horse a perfect trip. He saved ground every step. He basically just eases too wide. Miss the Cut has every chance to win this race while racing on his wrong lead for much of the stretch. He just happened to catch a freak in Easter. Yeah, every time we talk about turf racing recently in California, this is the name that comes up. It's Easter. It's Easter this and Easter that, but Easter was just so impressive in the several runs that we saw. So to be second best in a race behind him, I don't think it uh, looks poorly uh, when you look at Miss the Cut. And for me, I'm curious to see him go back to a mile and a quarter. I know his most recent one was a mile and a half on the dirt, but when you see performances like that, I still don't think he would have beaten Easter, but I don't think the mile and a quarter will work against him. Should help him. No, I agree. I think the extra distance is absolutely what he wants. Joel Rosario picks up the mount. Irish Profits, the number two, and he seems to have appreciated stretching out slightly in distance. They tried him a mile and eighth on the turf last time out, and he looked really good. It was a nice trip that day, sort of an in-out tracking trip, but he has that tactical speed to work out those trips. Now he steps up and faces the big boys. Yeah, and I think the thing is, not only is he stepping up, but maybe he's starting to come around a little bit. He's a horse that Took him, you know, a little bit of time to graduate, but it does seem like in his last five efforts, he's a better horse. He's a stronger horse. But um, we talked about Miss the Cut. We're going to talk about a couple other names. At least they've already stepped up to a level of stakes competition in the past. So um, I don't dislike him here, but I do think if, if you like him here, you're kind of reaching a little bit and hoping that he's just developing at the right time. When the three balladeer gets loose and he gets relaxed going a mile and a quarter, he can do this. In the John Henry Turf Championship last fall at Santa Anita, he can sprint on home and show some heart and determination, beating a solid horse and master of foxhounds. The Breeders' Cup turf is a throwout just simply from a class standpoint, his subsequent start. And then the Hollywood Turf Cup, maybe a mile and a half is just too far. This race suits him perfectly from a condition standpoint. Absolutely. I think a mile and a half is too far for him. And I think that's the key with him. He's a horse that's going to cut back. That should only help him. I still don't think he ran poorly last time out, but I think everything had to do with the distance. And you mentioned he can throw out his race two back. The two races that he put back to back, the one at Santa Anita, I almost showed the one at Kentucky Downs because we don't necessarily always see horses be able to kind of put in big efforts like that back to back at completely different configurations. That was a mile and five sixteenths, but Kentucky Downs, it's a wild place. It's a wild setup compared to what you see out in Southern California. So it wouldn't be shocking, at least I think, to see him really improve on the cutback after having a little bit of time off. Distance, a little bit of a question mark for the four Eastern Ocean. We saw him run in the Hollywood Turf Cup off the Peter Urton claim. And I thought all in all, he ran pretty well. He sort of was creeping up along the inside, tried to get out and never really got clear in the upper stretch. And by the time he did get clear, it was probably a little bit too late. His last race was the San Gabriel. He showed speed that day. And I wonder if that's really sort of his MO. I think he's better when he comes from off the pace. So maybe he's a little bit dirtied up. 
Yeah, it'll be curious to see what they'll do with him. I mean, it, it kind of was a little bit of an aggressive spot to claim him for 50, put him in a stakes race, but not only do that, but to stretch him out to a mile and a half, go down the page. This is a horse that had um, six and a half races on the downhill quite some time ago and a lot of races at a mile. So to me, going from a mile to a mile and a half can be a tough task and he didn't fire. He was only beaten by three lengths, but I don't love that effort. And then, as you mentioned, they switched the tactics on him the last time out. So to me, it's really hard to judge him in a spot like this from the, the idea of, okay, well, he's going to stretch out again to a mile and a quarter, but where will he be early? You'd like to see him sit off of it. Planetario, a multiple graded stakes winner, got back on the beam in the Hollywood Turf Cup going a mile and a half last time out. The trip seemed to work out very well for him. He saved ground in mid-pack. He finds the hole right here, and he blasts on through it just the right time. The runner-up, Francesco Clemente, might have been best because he missed the break completely, and it comes running widest to just miss. But Planetario is the kind of horse, maybe he wants a little bit more ground, but he's very honest. He is very honest. I think on paper, he's probably the class of this field, but the question is the distance. You, you know, I agree with you. I think a mile and a quarter might be too short, but I also wonder, can he at least carry himself on his class alone? That could be the case here, depending on how the race flow sets up, but he's a horse that wants distance. Um, I remember before he made his first start locally in 2022, you should see this, this horse's work tab. I mean, he has a lot of long distance drills that are not traditional, at least what we see here stateside. And uh, he certainly wants to go longer and he can do it, but this might be a little bit short. The cowbred short man completes the field. He's really taking a step up in class as he switches back to turf, also stretching way out in distance. His current form just isn't that appealing. He's very honest. I just think he caught a tough spot here. And I think last year he had a pretty tough campaign. You know, we saw him a bunch of times. He only had one win from those 12 starts. And I think some of his better days are, are further down the page or they're just against Calbred. So now to not have that protection and to be in an open graded stakes competition, it's a little bit of a different ball game. Let's take a look at our top picks for the San Marcos. You're going with Miss the Cut. And I agree with you. I just think this extra distance is really good for him. And he can fall into a good ground saving trip. I was torn between him and Planetario, and I think, you know, I tried to make the case of, well, Planetario is the class of the field. He could win this, but I just have a little bit of a reservation. This is a mile and three eighths. Absolutely would go to the five in here, but at a mile and a quarter, I decided to give Miss the Cut a try. I think this distance should hit him in the right spot. It's a fair point to be sure about the distance for Planetario. I think your point, though, before that maybe his class can carry him through. That's what I'm hoping for. Uh, we'll see what he get off from uh, from a two and a half month layoff or so. One five three two for Ashley. Five three one two for me. Fun edition of the San Marcos. Three graded stakes at Santa Anita on Saturday. Good luck.